Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. If you missed last episode, we put the, these custom Ross Butler pistons in the engine block, which is a huge milestone in any short block rebuild because we had to size the bearings. And it's, oh my gosh, so much goes into that. And if you missed it, and if it's your first time here, go check out how it started. It was a low oil pressure problem. I had to take apart the engine. Bearings were toast. I have not inspected the oil pump yet. That's what we're doing today, and that was a standard 80-pound pump. I have upgraded to a Butler Pro 80-pound pump, and I'm going to show you guys the differences. I'm going to take apart both, and you'll learn real quick as to why you should also upgrade to a Pro pump for your Pontiac. So subscribe if you haven't, because there's a lot left to do with this short block and long block. I got some tweaks I'm going to do there. Put it back in the goat and have some fun. So let's go hit the workbench. I'll show you the differences. All right, guys, here's my 80 pound standard pump we pulled out of the engine. I have not taken it apart yet. As you can tell, this is made by Melling. The biggest way you can tell from 60 from 80 is this uh, pressure relief valve tube is shorter on a 60. And the pro pump has a thick plate. I'll show you that when we get to it. Now, why do we need an 80 pound pump? Great question. Rule of thumb, anything over 500 or 550 horsepower, get an 80 pound pump. It gives you the reassurance that you're going to have enough oil for your hydraulic lifters because you have a bigger cam. If you're running higher RPM or even higher horsepower, you're going to want reassurance that your bearings are coated with oil at those high RPM levels. Lastly, if you have any loose tolerances on your, like your lifter bores, it'll make up for that. So just use the extra two horsepower, get the extra 20 psi but anyway an 80 pound pump is recommended for that 500 horsepower and up for lower than 500 then they also butler also makes up 60 pound pro pump so i'll get into the differences in the pro pump when i get to it but now i'm curious to find out what's in here and if there's any damage going on because of our low oil pressure issue all right bolts are off oh that's nasty see these gaps uh, that's where the plate must be flexing oil is getting out that's why the pro pump has a thick plate oh let's take this out actually just pull out we can push it out like that and as you can tell these are just two gears that spin oil gets sucked in one side and pressurized out the other this is a little there's a little uh, relief for oil pressure there, but I can all already see, I don't know if you guys see that ring. It looks like it was wearing on the plate or maybe even galling, and especially that shiny spot. Look at that. That's interesting. Huh. So looking down in here, um, there's our pressure relief ball. And I'm going to go ahead and take this assembly apart, and that's really easy. What I like to do is get a impact socket, because it's deep. And we can take it off and keep it on there, because there's a pretty massive spring load. I did this with a wrench, and it went shooting across the garage, so thank God I didn't hit the goat. But I'm going to go ahead and do that, take this off, and we'll see what we find. All right, so I took the spring off and the holder. Uh, usually the ball just falls out and it's actually not coming out. Oh, there we go. And I think a bunch of chunks of stuff came out too. Yep. If you can see that on the end of my finger, piece of metal. That could have explained my wavering uh, oil gauge. Maybe some metal got stuck in there. Oh, well, that's how it happens, but... Yep, I see more debris in there. Can you guys see in that hole? I can see little pieces of metal in there. Wow, okay. We're not making that mistake again. Anyway, that's pretty simple. That's how you take it apart. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside, clean off my bench, even put a new piece of paper down, and let's look at the pro pump. Here we go, this is what we get. This is the pro pump. You can tell right away at the thicker plate at the bottom, uh, machine surfaces here for your bolts. And this is lapped. You can tell it's nice and smooth for a perfect fit, as well as a copper gasket. That's pretty cool. 
versus the other one which comes with a paper gasket and then there's these also these shims that you can actually increase the oil pressure 5 to 10 psi if you wanted to and a flow chart so we're looking at 20 gallons per minute at 2500 rpm so we'll put that away we don't need that and these two we'll use those later now let's tear this apart i want to see what's inside so i'm gonna go ahead and take these bolts off be right back all right those screws are countersunk which is pretty cool i like it oh there we go so we have the same slot as the other unit and Oh, that's different. You guys see those dimples? I think that's for cavitation. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart just like our other unit. Give it a visual. I'll probably go ahead and look at the other parts and be right back because I'm gonna do a visual for everything. And I'll summarize the differences for you. So I finished my visual. Um, I also called David Butler at Butler Performance, and we went over some of the details. This is the latest gen. They've had several iterations on the market. Uh, for example, some of the older iterations had an oil groove in that bore. They also had um, oil groove holes on the top of the idler gear. They also had a weep hole drilled in the middle. Those have changes have gone away, uh, basically from customer experience and um, hundreds of units sold without failure and the big reason for this one was this is cast now so if you try and drill it it's going to shatter <laughs> so that's one good reason right anyway so uh, one one thing to note on this one instead of that groove they did chamfer this end and they shaved this down a little bit as compared to the stock version see there's no machining there you can tell so all in all you know Butler's sold thousands of these without failure, running on street cars all the way up to Mike Cooper's Pro Mod Firebird that runs low sixes at 220 miles an hour. So uh, if that doesn't give you credibility, I don't know what does. And again, if you guys aren't comfortable with an 80 pound pump, you can get a 60 pound version, which is awesome. Oh, the other thing they do is they actually lap this uh, where the ball sits down in there so you get a better fit uh, it's more uniform and then they blueprint all the dimensions that they're doing uh, to keep record of it and even including the spring so i'm sold i think it's pretty slick so i'm gonna go ahead and put it back together when you guys reassemble it make sure it's totally clean and these four bolts get loctite uh, take some time to also put some loctite on the lock nut for the spring because you don't want that backing out on you. And then put it all back together and then we'll, we'll go ahead and tackle the, the pickup tube, the modifications we have to do there, and we'll put it in the block. So the original went about right there. You can see how the holes are lined up. And that dotted line is where this edge is. So I have to make a bend somewhere in between the bottom line and this region to get it to increase height only by about an eighth of an inch and then come over to that hole so we might have to elongate this hole too ah oh, here we go almost there check it out so i added just a tiny bit of elevation there elevation change and now so this is all pressed in and you can see the hole doesn't line up quite right yet so i'm going to take my uh burr I just open up that hole <laughs> all right there we go and if i didn't mention it earlier these get torqued down to 15 pound feet there's also a torque spec for this one but i just tighten that one as much as i can and then wipe off any excess thread locker use blue thread locker so you can take it apart at some point but you use thread locker so this doesn't fall apart in your engine <laughs> let's go hit the block show you what's going on there and install this bad boy all right guys before we put the oil pump on it's time to talk about windage trays they are actually optional depending on your use surprisingly enough so in the earliest the mid 70s pontiac decided to do away with a windage tray so that's why some pontiac engines don't have one well mine did to 69 
and talking to Butler Performance about something totally unrelated, we started talking about windage trays. Do I really need one? What's, what's up with the deal? They said, it is optional, but since I have a hard cornering car, you might want to get one just so you don't get oil splashing up onto the crank that's spinning at high speed. The reason windage trays exist is for exactly that reason. You don't want oil splashing up on your crank. That slows down your crank. That oil then gets splashed onto the cylinder walls and gets heated up. So it, it actually increases the temperature of the oil. The other thing called windage, the air coming off of the crank spinning at high velocity, can aerate your oil. And too much aeration gets into the pump. You now have cavitation. And now you, your pump doesn't have enough oil to pump. And now you have an oil starvation issue. Oh, that's why windage trays exist. So the other factoid to remember is if you have a, the stock tray, right here, this is the stock one, it's 50 years old. Because of the vibration of the engine over 50 years, it can get brittle and crack and fall apart in your engine. Yeah, that's not good. So kids, say no to crack. <laughs> so I got a new one. It has a few more holes, which is pretty cool. I got a little bit more drainage. This is not a fancy one. You can get fancier ones. This was around $50. Again, I'll, I'll leave a link below. But this is your opportunity to test fit your um, oil pan. So I have a Canton oil pan. I put it on here and notice right away I had to bend this side. You can see my marks here. I had to bend those corners in to make sure the oil pan fit. You want to do it now because when we put the pump on, it's just harder to do. So now's the time to take this on and off, make bends where you need it. And then when you're done, excuse me, when you're done, torque these bolts down 15 inch pounds with blue Loctite and you are good. We're ready to go to the next step. Let me show you. All right guys, I forgot to mention, make sure when you're testing this, rotate your crank a few times, make sure you're not rubbing. I had to shim mine because I have a stroker crank. So I put like uh, 3 16 inch shims in between the bolts and uh, the cap. So that's that. The other thing you need to do is get a new drive shaft. For the same reason you don't want to use the 50 year old drive shaft, these tanks can break off because they're now 50 years old and fragile. So uh, go ahead and clean it off. And then I'm going to add some assembly lube on this shaft here because it fits in a hole. Let me show you the target hole. That hole right down in there. That's our target. The other thing to note on the drive shaft, there's a hole in one end and not the other. The hole goes on the pump and these tangs go down in that hole. That's what holds it in place. So go ahead and get your gasket too. It goes one way, not the other. Check that out. I don't know if you can see, but the hole is partially covered. So pay attention to that. You have to flip it around. Determine which way it goes. And that is the correct way right there. So I'm going to go ahead and lube this up with my assembly lube. Drop it in the hole and we'll put our pump on. Okay, here's the part that's going to test your patience. Is lining up that hole with the drive shaft and keeping your gasket in the same spot <laughs> that's why i already like the copper gasket because it's much easier to keep there so you can you can hold it down in place like this and check your clearances make sure you have space all around your pump i actually had to dimple the top of the um, windage tray or the bottom to give it a little bit of room because I remember I had to shim it up, but we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts in. The bolts get torqued to 30 foot pounds and make sure you put thread locker on them. Real quick, I forgot to mention, when you get a new shaft, make sure you test that it fits in your distributor. I've seen instances or I've heard stories of people getting a new shaft and their distributor doesn't fit and they figure that out after they're done building the engine. It's in the car. Yeah, not good. Mine fits, I tested it. Guys, we're not quite done yet. Don't get so excited. We still need to test to see if our pickup bottoms out on the oil pan. This is how you do it. A couple of layers of painter's tape. Go bother your kids for some super high-tech modeling clay. 
Put a little ball on top. Now we get to put the pan on, take the pan off. Oh, don't forget your gasket. Push down on it like you bolted it in. Oh, stuck to the bottom. That's it. It's about three eighths of an inch for me. You don't want to see this tiny gap or no gap at all because oil can't get into your pickup screen. Duh. And if you have a stock pickup screen, think about adding a tack weld where it goes into the pump because most aftermarket screens have a bolt in so you don't have to tack it. There we go. We're all, we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and spend some time cleaning up my oil pan. Put the oil pan on. I don't need to film it. But thanks for hanging out, guys. Hope you learned a lot. I highly recommend the Pro Pump. I can't wait to use it. If you have any questions, call Butler Performance. And until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.